Let, let's let's write Gail some let's write Gail some material. Piece yeah. of cake. Dude, I could we could I could knock out fifty. Good time how you look like you know like an old lesbian. Hello everyone, hola mis amigos. You're listening to Oh my God, hi, hijo de Dios, hola. With me, George Lopez, porque sabe que let's do the show porque está calado. Let's do the thing I gotta go that dry cleaner I eat by Kid Phelps. Se pegó la cabeza y algo que es Neil Sport Sport and Paul. You know what George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George Lopez. George Lopez. Oh, my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi. The amount of material you have to cover week to week is tremendous. And then he taught me a system. <laughs> I used to oh, you saw the system, though, right? All the, all the capital letters and stuff that I oh, used, yeah, the marker. Yeah, that, that was too confusing for me. Does it work for you? It, it's starting to work for me because now I'm really thinking about it that way. If you say, um, where would I find uh, that? I would be like WWFT. Yeah, I feel like that's something you have to pick up. Early. Where would I find that? I, I, I couldn't see myself. Being I started able to pick doing that up. word association today. I had to say we're going to need to catalog all of the uh, um, your inventory and take you know your missing items or something like that and take and see what was taken. So I thought catalog, and then I have to like yeah, it was basically like a game that I played with mm -hmm. it, and so. Uh, I was thinking, I was, he, he got in my head in a good way that helped me memorize, but the amount of volume is ridiculous, and then he does something incredible. I just which, have a photographic memory, I think. You do? Yeah. Uh, are, you like, are, you like the, the, are you like the lady with the big tetas from Taxi? <laughs> what was her name? <laughs> like <laughs> With a big knee She had a photographic memory? Yeah, she could tell you, they could, if you, if you go back and say a date of their life, they could tell you, Everything that happened that day. Yeah, I can't do that. I can look at a line, and if I and have then, no pressure, it's just there. Wow. But you, I always usually feel a little bit of pressure. But do you, so th I, you think that's, that's a gift? Do you think it's just having a clear head, or? I don't know. I think from just doing theater in school, I would count my lines, and it would be like 150 lines in a play. And then I would just go through, and I would just memorize them over and over and over. And I think that just kind of stuck with me. So then doing small scenes that are you know three pages long, just is, is easier. Um, Gil has a, a memory of what could you, you can remember everything you ate. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what kind of fucking sauce it has? And that How takes a long, big memory. How many big salt list. shakes? <laughs> uh, you, you you remember crime statistics? Yes. Really? Yeah. But about not not just you know he caught the Night Stalker yeah, right yeah of course and he was the one that even though he looked like uh, Linda Ronstadt in the beginning of the <laughs> he had the little fucking <laughs> cut haircut he's like he's like if if you if you were alerted of anything I, I said this motherfucker can break into some blue bayou <laughs> every time I got a word with a little mustache like I think Linda Ronstadt had a fucking little mustache like that too and then uh, it was only internal that this is how crime fighting was back then yeah. here's a guy who said it's a, it's one guy. And this guy is a serial killer, t fucking cannibal, taking eyes with them, throwing caca on the side of people's houses, yeah. no DNA, and he does a video, and it's only internal to the sheriff's office. Yeah, we didn't have, not even computerization was up that well, so we I did. Mean, we made a video down our media section, made copies of it, and got it out to every station so everybody had the same working information. But they had copies of it. It wasn't streamed or anything. No, yeah, no, it's no. like It's like having a secret in high school that <laughs> only your friends know. Yeah. <laughs> You're um, trying to find a most notorious fucking killer. Speaking don't tell of, anybody. Speaking of fighting, I was always had this question for Gil, and excuse me if you covered it, but I heard a story from sheriffs that these sheriffs had to go into county and escort some prisoners out or something like that, and then they were attacked in there. Um, have you ever had anyone try to take your weapon? Have you ever been in a full-on fight to the death? No, I've been in fights. This was after, but, you, uh, not, be, not while yeah, you were dating, not, before you got married. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once I got the homicide, which was in 81, they, I didn't have to do that. Your anymore. fighting days were over. Yeah. No, but as a, how about as a patrol cop? Yeah, as a patrol cop, I've been, I've been in fights uh, that were I don't know that any of them were death-defying because... Because you have a gun on. I have a gun on. I remember the first time I used a sap, you know, those things, 
This thing, you know, a guy ass. guy come running down a hallway, and you know, we had a warrant. Wait, what's for him. a sap? It's a sap. It's a leather, about Fuck, twelve inches of, length. That's leather those. filled yes. with lead. Lead. Oh, so, like what? Are, what is another name? Oh, you know it's like a smaller is? baton, right? Not baton, uh, but a, no. a bull. What is it? Uh, like a blackjack. A blackjack. blackjack. That's what yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, no blackjack. Yes. This, this was uh, a sap, and some guy come running around. I knew, you know, he's a badass. He come running around the hallway, and I I collared him. And I sapped him right in the head, as hard as I could, and the sap went flying. Oh. So now the fight's on. You know, I, I lost my sap. Now the fight's just on, and uh, but I I won. Yeah. Well, the yeah. sap go flying from your hand because in the carb you were you were eating candy and all of the, the little. <laughs> <laughs> no, it made your hand. it is stuck to my hand. If I'd have been eating candy, Mexican candy. I'm not a sweet eater. I'd have been That's eating a burrito. Loose. There'd have been queso on there and chili, little, but, so, uh, little, but no candy. Yeah, the jalapeno skin got caught between the sap and you. But so so, but that's what that's what um, I mean. Hand to hand. Yeah, yeah, we were we were we were hand to hand. But you're wearing a gun. Are you terrified that somebody's gonna he's gonna try to take that or? No, I, I I fought I fought dead bang because I got out of a car one night. We had been in foot pursuit and helicopters overhead and directed me to the backyard where this guy's at. And it was a cold night. I'm wearing a nylon jacket, so I get out of my car and I run back there where he's at and I see the guy, and we take him down. And I hit him with my stick because I went first. I wanted to do. He was trying to hide. I went to get my gun, and my gun wasn't there. So I think this guy's armed, and I don't know. So now the fight is on, and I'm fighting for my life. You know, as a matter of fact, some sergeant came by and stuck his hand in there, and I swung to hit the guy with the baton, and he screams. He said, "Be careful! Get your hand out of the way!" Then you know, I'm taking oh, wow. care of business. So we hooked him up, and I went back. And what had happened when I got out of the car when I was running? My sleeve got hooked on the butt of my gun, and oh. knocked it out of my holster. Oh, wow. So that was the last time I wore a jacket on patrol. I did it without. I was afraid to lose my gun. What about other any any other fights? Like no. multiple fights? Not really, because it no. doesn't like you're able to. I'm big. You, you, the, the, the you weren't afraid, you weren't afraid that since you weren't wearing your jacket that if you rolled into like a crime scene that the guys that were there would go, man, that sheriff's got some nice tetas, eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> let's, inter let's introduce our guest here. Um, El Madrigal is uh, actor, comedian from San Francisco. Yes. Very talented, was on The Daily Show, uh, an incredible writer, brilliant mind in comedy, anxiety like a motherfucker, though. I thought, I'm <laughs> yeah. fucking aware. This about to looks cool on the outside. He's all thought convoluted on the inside. Matt Shively is a tremendous actor, star of Lopez versus Lopez. Uh, this body transformation that he's morphed literally from, from Mrs. Doubtfire in the pilot <laughs> to Man Candy from the second episode on. You were chubby in the pilot? Dude, I lost 18 pounds between episode one. I'm about to look like Miss Doubtfire. Oh, my mom used to work for you. <laughs> <laughs> He's like uh, Jeremy Doubtfire. Jeremy um, Doubtfire. But you, you, were, and uh, but, but um, you, you were 18 pounds and uh, heavier. But were you when, when you auditioned? Were you preparing for anything? Were you? you were, no, I know no, you were no. On I, vacation. I always stopped drinking between uh, January and the end of March because of pilot season. Because I bloat really See, quickly. He's a fucking good actor then. You're because, you know, No, no, no. I've just failed a be like, I'm going to stop <laughs> that's drinking. A, that, that, that's why I stopped drinking, because I bloat. <laughs> no, I've just, I've, I've failed a <laughs> lot. I come here and get the park. I fucking bloated. I'm trying to switch it up. They gave me some something out there that doesn't drink from January to the end of March. <laughs> no, because I try to lose all of the holiday weight. So I was like, I, I actually had lost like five pounds, six pounds leading up to the pilot itself. And then once we got picked up, I was like, okay, I guess I could try a little bit. And I just, I just stopped. Incredible, man. This guy, this guy, I will say this, you know, people that want to be an actor and, and uh, are out there, I would say that uh, don't ever think that you can't do it. I mean, because everybody comes from everywhere around the world and they become everything that they want to be. You know, people that want to be, you know, police officers and detectives can do great things. But if you say to yourself, man, you know, I'll never... I don't know how to do it. I'll never know how to do it. There's way more information now at your fingertips. You have a phone. I mean, whatever, right? It's all there. You can ask anything of any question I'll tell you. So, you know, we, we had a guy, like we, we looked at maybe like 150, maybe 200 guys, maybe. I think actors and wow. all kinds of actors. And actors that you've seen and known, you know, seen For and known. For his part. For his part. Really popular, great actors and then settled yeah. for men. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 
even even guys like you know if if you've had some success and then you know your show ends you know that's just turning that page like you never go back to that page again it's like what you, you know if if it never had success then they'll say oh you were on that show what was the name of it and it's like oh yeah then as time goes they stop asking you know what show it was and then everybody's out there and you might uh see a guy and go wow that guy it's really good and they're really good but they're just not right like you know there's a look and there's a style so we thought of uh, that the quentin character was going to be more of a of a nerdy guy like a nebbish guy mm. and then we found a guy that was friends with somebody that maya knows and Ann, and i know him too the friend of the family and that guy was good that guy was good very good he and he read against other actors and he stood out and nbc and universal said you know we don't like that guy. We don't think he's the right type. That's not the person that we see in this part. And we're like, shit, man, do we fight for that dude? Or do we say, well, I mean, they're going to ultimately make the last decision. It's not my show. It's not, it's not anybody's show. It's not, so it's their decision. They're hiring the people. And uh, we saw Matt. And I think you were on vacation, weren't you? No, I had actually, I was working in the Keys. You were in the Keys, yeah. I was, oh, I and you were the, on the day I landed was I got that email saying that I was meeting again, because I had already gone out like three or four times for it. Oh, without a scene? I Well, I read with Mayan like a month prior. Oh, wow. I and I, I remember getting it, and I, I got the size. I was like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to book this. This is, I, this is totally me. And then I went like three separate times, didn't work. And then the moment I landed in the Keys is when I got the, the email saying about that for the producers. And I was like, well, shit, I don't have anything to do it. So I had to, like, tape my phone up against a yeah. wall in a hotel and just hope for the best. Plus, they had just sent out sides that day where the character was half Mexican. And they kept making comments about it, about him being half Mexican. And he's like, well, George, I am Mexican. And I was like, well, shit, this is yeah. not yeah, going to yeah. go. Oh, yeah. well, that's a trip. I yeah. And so luckily, that. this is where your memorization skills come in. And you're able to tape a phone up against the wall. People don't realize how hard it is to self-tape and do these auditions. It is now because they're not doing any in-person um you know, meetings anymore and casting sessions. You, you got to be your own, own like, uh, your you got to be yeah. your own tech guy. Yeah. Like, yeah, you have to be your own tech person. I think, by the way, my favorite story about all of this was the moment we finished the pilot in front of the live audience, my parents came down and you met my parents and you started telling them the story about how you were like, oh, we found these two guys. They were great. We really wanted them. The studio said no. And they were like, oh, okay. And then you're like, no, no. But then there was this other guy that we really, really loved that I was like rooting for, but the studio wasn't down. And so we had to move. And I was like, just tell them that I was the choice from the top. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just appease not. my parents here and just say it was always me. But I'm a Chicano. I don't give a fuck. Hey, you <laughs> left. That dude was a, he was asleep. Hey. He came back to get his car key. He was like, hey, you're in. <laughs> I'll um, take it. But, they, you know, but he's great. I mean, but he's... He, you, I mean, you know how I am. You yeah. already spent six months with me. I don't give. I don't fucking throw compliments. Um, oh, I write them all down. I have so many different personalities. I know. Too. I, I have know. Very, I have a lot of different personalities. Yes, you do. Um, this one's different than others, but but you really are. I mean, I've worked with you know some actors you can like and some you don't like, and I've been fortunate to have you know you saw the people from the first show. Yeah. But uh, I Your hold family. you in high esteem. Well, I appreciate that because I think you're an incredibly talented guy. Funny as fuck, man. Dude, and also... What about when he did the, the fucking junior acrobats in the backyard? Man? Dude, dying. Um, the, the, the preparation is inspiring. Like, yeah. I, again, I'm, I'm not even, like... I do throw compliments around, but they're deserving because you and Selenis are... Did I say that right? Yeah. Don't ask um, me, motherfucker. That <laughs> uh, very difficult name. Um, what am I, the fucking judge of the spelling? <laughs> no, you're uh, like, uh, yes. He, yes. I uh, say it wrong all the time. I, I don't even want to say the name. But fucking we have an actress on the show who's been, amazing as well, and she fuck brings it. And, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just, this group so um, is, is it's pretty inspiring. I've told you this. Like, yeah. I, you made me, I like, and again, I, I really want to be great in every single line and have it. I have to come in and hit homers. And um, because you know you're, you're dealing with a limited amount of space, and then um, it, so I yeah. Prepare. But you show up, you're all fucking marijuana, cabron. You show up under the influence, <laughs> but that's all right. Alleged. That is not true. I'm a, I'm a method actor. I put myself in the space. You do. Um, I really try. Are you still wearing your red beanie or not? I haven't paid attention. I am. I've oh. uh, nonsense. Have you seen? They right. change the color occasionally on me, but yeah. This is the longest I've seen you without a beanie on. Oh really? Yeah, in person? Yeah. 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 
Crazy. Um, I, I love it. I think, again, that's why um, I'll, I'll talk about it. On Monday, when I rapped, what? don't shake your head. I'm <laughs> telling you, you... You have moments with one of your personalities where you're very are, are good about talking about feelings, and you're very like, um, I could see you getting sappy, and uh, you uh, you're just like me. That's Robert. That's another guy. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're gonna no, emotional no, no, about no, this no, stuff. No, no, you know no. how much I love this group, and that's what it, that's where all that came from. No, right? no, no, no. That's not true. If you were paying attention to the, all the scripts, you would know that you know you might you you know your character. Was gonna, you know, we're gonna all of our lines are gonna end in a couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, no, I I know that, I know that, I know, I know that, but I don't know. I just we went from the premiere, which again, Lopez. Listen, versus Gary Lopez. Gilmore was executed in Utah. He showed less drama than you did wrapping your last scene. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker just said, "Let's do it." And you're like, I just want to tell everyone this is. I was so to be fair, that guy knew it was going to be the end. Thing. Yeah, I was, oh, yeah, to be I fair, was, he was aware out. it was, was the end. I was, firing squad, they don't do that anymore. <laughs> I was legitimately uh, miss, you know, miss everybody. So it was very sincere. And I know, it's, Where does I get, that we, come from? Though? It's lame. We came I, back from, not from the no, premiere. No, we were t- on cloud nine. It's not lame. The first thing you we got did, told. We did something in your personality, in in your thing, family, like abandonment. No, there's I'll something tell you, in I'll, there. Not even abandonment. Of people leaving. Maybe your maybe your little league coach got in a car accident and never came back. I if you wanted, if we were you guys really want to know. Like uh, I always felt really uh, as a little kid. A, you want to give them the test? Okay, go ahead, and then we'll give them the test of the thing. We'll get back. Please, through. I always felt really as a little kid sad at Christmas, and I know exactly where it comes from. And I still sometimes like I like watching my kids, but I always get sad at Christmas. Because my brothers and had godfathers that would show up with these big gifts, and like, uh, I, and I got like a. Remember they used to do a book of lifesavers, like you at, at around Christmas time. Mm-hmm. They got the yeah. variety of lifesavers when you were yes. a little kid, and it was like in a little book. I got that, and then um, like, and you know, my parents bought me gifts, but it was like Christmas Eve was a big deal in our house. Who was your godfather? My uncle John, who you know, like. You know, he was, he was my the dad's one who brought brother. the lifesavers? He, he didn't even bring lifesavers. Oh. It was like he, he didn't bring anything. He's still living? No, they all passed away. Did you have a uh, relationship with him that wasn't about material? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true. I, I did. It was silly. But anyway, it's yeah. I was a little baby about it. But um, I feel like <laughs> this, I think where that came from is I've been on a lot of TV shows that haven't i've never had this feeling with a group like this and that's why i know it's special and i was like what is it? i'm going I away think i'm gonna start crying he was all bubbles uh, though he was like he was no i was fucking and the worst I really part was, was that our it. normal cr- camera pr- people weren't there so they're like uh, all right they're like ow good job <laughs> no 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 but but yes i mean and you see how much i talk to everybody too i, I know what the fuck is that man <laughs> I'm just naturally like I've always known everybody's name on set. I can tell you every single wardrobe. You think person's that's one name. of the reasons why those shows haven't succeeded? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of being like me, who doesn't know anybody's name, just walks in and walks out. Uh, I know. There's whatever. something to that, isn't there? Yeah, I mean, yeah, just because there's a lot of being it's, let down. So. It's, not that, it's not that I'm unfriendly. You're right? very friendly. It's not that I'm unfriendly, but I have a. You know, I have a I have a drive that I do. I go yeah. and I do my thing, and I, I I you got the timer. I go I go back out and I go back out. But you're also on another tier. No, but dude. I think like you're you operate up here. You're no, on another level. It's just that there's you know there's just what do they call them in Vietnam? FN FNGs, fucking fuck, you guys, fuck, fuck, new, fucking new guys. Like nobody makes any um, relationship with anybody no. in the first part of the sh- of, yeah. oh, of, shit. of Viet- because they're not going to be around. Exactly. So. Fuck. In a, in a sense, you're, I I learned from the other show, the first show, that I would just go and really be very compartmentalized about where I would go and Man. just do it and come back and do it and come back. I seriously go and just, just talking to the fucking boom guy. And I saw I study the board and learn everybody's names. I go in between. Uh, I've caught uh, you multiple times, three inches from that board, yeah, looking the fuck, at faces. Man. I Why? Because you're like, like Mr. You everybody like me and all that. You want everybody to like you? I just, I think, the, I don't know. I've always, so what changes I've always if, done if, that. When we do season two, what changes on your end? Nothing. You don't get any closer? No. 
Not that I'm distant, but I just so do my our thing. relationship right now. This is as deep as it goes. Uh, no. is it deep? Well, it's 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 as deep. But as we're, it goes. we're respectful of each other, right? Yes. Yeah. I I don't know where it comes from. I don't, I've always been like this. Have you ever I've, cried yourself to sleep as an adult? <laughs> 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 you know you have. So, you, yeah, all right. So give them the, give them the detective test of right. how to, Go ahead. How to learn. You. That's a, isn't that a good one though? I I miss my calling. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been a people. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? The? Oh, that's okay. his fault. Uh, I, you're talking about uh, if I ask him a question, what <laughs> no, their response is going to be, what kind of... <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Don't tell them what it is. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. Here's, here's what the detectives use on suspects and people here, here, under interrogation. And, and, and if, if there are three Witnesses. basic kind of people out there. So if I ask you right now, what's the first thing that comes to your mind about your godfather, Uncle Johnny? What's the first thing you remember about him? Motorcycle. Motorcycle. He's a visual man. Because now I know, but by people are basically, well, let me let me ask you, Matt, what's the first thing that crosses your mind when you remember thinking about your grandmother? A big remote. A, a big, a big remote. For I just remember the older she got, the bigger the remote got. <laughs> ah, okay, now see, both of them are are, are visual, because people ninety nine ninety nine percent of the people in the world are either visual, kinesthetic, or audio. Mm -hmm. So if I sit there and say, what did your first thing come to me about your uncle? Uh, him saying, I'm sorry, I didn't get you the gift that you wanted. You can still hear his voice or you can hear me yelling at your, at, at your dad because they're yeah, brothers. Yeah, they fight. You're yeah. an audio person. Mm -hmm. And same thing with you. You know, you're either, you either love, oh, my grandmother, she was so sweet. I loved her so much. You're kinesthetic. So what we do, what I did was then by knowing, ask you a few questions, just find out what kind of person you are. Then I will gauge the questions I'm going to ask you about the case on the type of person you are. Is, you know, whether it be a witness, a suspect, or anything, what did you see? What did you hear? Mm. What did that guy sound like? You know, you, you can't, you don't remember what he looked like, but what did he sound like? Oh, he sounded like Samuel Jackson. <laughs> sound like George Lopez. Yeah, it you makes know, a lot so, of sense. And so that's what we did. We And I'm an, audi and I'm an auditory guy. I'm not a yeah. visual. So, Is there a percentage of who? I think more people are visual than auditory. I really don't know. I never kept st statistics. <laughs> so, so, so people that are out there, and if they if they have an interaction with a police officer or, or a detective, are they being monitored from the time that the 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 law enforcement person sees that person? No, most to cops break them don't. Even, down? No, most cops don't even think of, think like that. Don't it, think it, like it's that. advanced. You know, once you become on for a while and you go through a lot of training, you do a lot of stuff. College, you, you learn this stuff on. So street cops won't know this stuff. You know, seasoned detectives will, and they may not know it. I remember going through a class, uh, analytical interviewing, and they said at the end of the first session that I was uh, unconsciously conscious. And that means I knew everything they were trying to teach, but I didn't know how. I didn't know why I knew it. It just came to me like magic. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. that's after years and years of doing this shit. So... I knew what to do, but I never put a name to it. And so now, years and years and years, you put names to it. And you, you, Is it do they still do good cop, bad cop? Yeah, yeah. They're, because they're I think most, most, most people who would be asked questions by a police officer, they're not uh, hardened or they, they're going to really let you let them talk, right? That doesn't good, good cop, bad cop only works with fish, new guys, you know, that haven't been around the block, haven't been arrested, don't have a crime record, you know, that. That good cop, bad cop, you know. Yeah. And, uh, other than that, you know, and I never like to be the bad cop. It's much well, easier well, to get somebody to talk to you if you treat them decently. When you were growing up, was there anybody in your family that was an actor? Was there anybody that was in theater? Anybody that was an artist or anything like that? No, that's always been the craziest. My mom is always saying, like, she doesn't know where I got it from because I nobody in my family. But your mom is very extroverted. Sure. She's very... She's kind she's of, very you know about his mom, but she's. I just met his mom, but I don't. I don't Can know. Can you give us a couple she's, of examples? She's a trip, but she's she's extroverted. She's loud. She's the craziest person in the world when she says she's like I, I don't like people around. So she just bought a, a a house in North Carolina that's away from everything. She doesn't want to know anybody. Doesn't want to see anybody. But she's also the exact same person that when we go to a restaurant, whoever is sitting around us in a vicinity, she's gonna talk to every one of them. And I'll look down at my phone. I'll look back up, and she's over hmm. talking to a baby. 
two, do- two tables down asking what you ordered, and then in the same breath that night will say, I don't like people. I don't like to talk, but I don't like to be around people. And I'm I like, that it. doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> I know you get it. Well, she said, she's like, I just don't think people really like me. And I said, well, if you don't think people like you, why do you approach them? If you think that they don't like you, then why are you talking to them? And oh, that's, I, I do that all the time. Yeah. I, I talk I talk to people and I go, oh, man, you're such a fucking idiot. Why do you say that? Why do you, like, in my head, I have, like, I'm just like, oh, dude, you just, you, you Damn, put your man. foot in your I, mouth. I didn't even know, bro. I didn't know you were like that. Yeah, I, 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 I really always have been. Like, and, and so, uh, super nice to everybody. Want to treat everybody the exact same way garbage man you know whatever you know lowest person sam the ad to you know i uh, uh, you know bruce or katie or anybody uh running the show same exact treatment and like oh he's everybody and then regret for being so fucking talkative as well (laughs) in the car on the way back yeah (laughs) shut the fuck up man (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, so 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 she's, and that's a little bit of a counter, huh? Counter, like you want to, she sure. bought a house, a physically bought a house where she could be away from people. But maybe she says, I only want to be with people on my terms. Like, I want to have my time alone, and if I want to engage in conversations, I'll go to a restaurant. She's very controlling. Sounds like somebody who oh. wants to be in control. Ooh. Uh, which is weird because I think for most of her life she wasn't in control. So maybe that's the, no, the flip of it is, is she's doing that. She controls her environment. She wants a house all by herself. But yet when she goes over here, she wants to be in control. She wants to talk to people she, at her convenience. Yeah. So. That's hmm. interesting. My favorite thing to do in my life is, well, I've done it a couple of times, play golf solo and... Uh, and also um, puts around my house and fix shit by myself with AirPods yeah. in. Just like, then you, yeah, you want to be by, yeah, okay. He wants to be alone. Yeah. See, and I'm the opposite. I hate being, being alone. Oh, but I wow. also have a hard time talking to people just one-on-one. I'm great in a group of people, and I can keep turn it on at any time. But the moment I get one-on-one with somebody, I lock up. That's that's way, I don't know if you've ever noticed. That's way different than somebody weird. would be great in a group of people. Like be the the guy bringing people together, and then one on one can't talk. If I just love people. I, I I really do. I love people. Yeah, I love the I'm underdog. You know, I, <laughs> I, love, I pull for the underdog. I, those those need help. You're telling me you've never been at a party or anything like that, and you're like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. You of don't course. have any social anxiety. Like I wouldn't I, even go to the party. How about that? Okay, because I go to some of these like. If you go to like a pre Emmy party or one of the you know agency like that, I'll look around and look and I go look at my wife and go, "We gotta get the fuck out of here. I can't handle this." You go, do you compare yourself to other people in there? I don't know. I don't think so. I, I know a lot of people. I I don't know what's going on. I just know we gotta go. I can only be here for a very. Are you medicated? Uh, do you take medication? <laughs> no. Do you smoke the little, little thing, the little surfboard? Uh, yeah, surfboard every now and then. Every now and then, or not every, not constantly. Um, how long your mom and dad been married? 20 years? It's my stepdad. Oh, 20 years? Oh. Yeah. Um, my parents divorced when I was five, and then she remarried six years later. Do you think that their parents, do you think that them getting the divorce made you want to be an actor, like to, to be accepted kind of? I, it's funny you say that, because I literally was talking about it like six months ago. I was like, I, I got into acting because I think I wanted attention. Yes. Genuinely. Oh, That's right. Sure. I remember yes, in fourth grade being in the play and laying down on the stage at the beginning of the play and there was an audience looking at me and in my head, looking back on it, it was like a thousand people, but I think it was maybe a hundred. And I just remember being like, oh my God, they're all looking at me. This is what I have to do. Did this you feel it attention. turn a light on? Did you feel it? Did you feel it kind of fill you here? Like, a, like it? Oh yeah. It was, it was the overwhelming sense of just like, oh my God, this is what I want to do forever. And then, you know, watching television, watching movies and stuff like that, seeing Jim Carrey, seeing Shia LaBeouf at the time, like things like that. It was like, oh, my God, I want to entertain the way that these people entertain. And then it was so it was a mixture of the wanting the attention, but then also just like loving that you can go and pretend to do all of these things and get to have this like amazing time that's not real and then go and do another one. But also but also you haven't you, you at that point you hadn't acted yet. So you don't know what infrastructure set up. In yeah. Hollywood or in places? No, 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 no. I was, I was one of the ones that went to, like, and spent four or $5,000 for commercial classes. Man, I think we might have to block his name. That's the one where, where if you suck your, their dick, say you didn't get you on a movie of the week. <laughs> they still owe me a movie. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> you know what? It, 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 they, they, they go in there. It's almost like, uh, what was that thing where you go in there and you go, hey, the phone's free. Then they get coverage. You got a case. Everything's after that, $1,000. Like, you go in there. Oh, we went in for it. was for a Pepsi commercial. And we got there, and it wasn't a Pepsi commercial. It was like a, a tutorial for what auditioning for a Pepsi commercial would be. And then you, a guy would come out There's and look milking, around milking. and then point at you. And bring you in with your parent and be like, you should sign up for classes. You should do this and this and this. It's going to be this much. Do it. And so, you know, they would only pick like five or ten of those kids and the rest would leave. But they just rope you into paying all this money and doing these things. And mm -hmm. the, Do you know the, that movie, Me, Earl, and the Dying, Dying Girl? Yeah. You know, uh, R.J. Seiler. Mm -hmm. I worked with him on I'm Dying Up Here. And his stories, this kid was walking in the mall in Florida. And that's, they had one of those things set up in the mall where it's like, talent executive here. And seriously, a, a lady picks up the phone and says, I found him. Oh, my God. And hangs up, uh, and he gets me, Earl, and the dying girl. Like, and then career just, choong, like, guy takes off. But, so it's got to be, like, real at some point. Yeah. But it seems like a scam, well, right? From, sure. From, would, you, would you say that they helped you or did not... Is there something connected to the things that you got as an actor? Too? I would say the only thing that it helped me with was like once you had signed up for those classes, you were in the system, and once a month they would do an agent showcase, and you would go, you could go in and you could do your own monologue or something for an agent, and then you would get an agent. So that was the only thing that came from that was the fact that I ended up getting an agent through them. It was a terrible agent at the wow. time. I, did, I mean, I had two different agents before I actually had an agent who got me stuff that. So it's just somebody doing. who says I'm an agent. Yeah. And uh, I'm working with Robert Powers. Yeah. And Pretty that's much. Hilarious. Yeah. You know, I went through some stress management. We were talking about what made you go over here. I went through stress management, and they, they taught me some self hypnosis. What stress management? Where? Uh, through the department in Chinatown. The, uh, through 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 the sheriff's <laughs> department because a little candy all, the all this pressure from the homicide investigations. Of, you know, everything was building up. So they wanted me to go to stress management. So they did. Part of this was self hypnosis. So they teach you. They taught me how you walk down these steps and you get to the bottom. And so you count backwards from ten. You go down. You open this door, and you're anywhere you want to be. Where you're comfortable, where you're, you're, there's your comfort zone, and, and what was your comfort zone? Right, it there? was in a park with my dad, my mom, my family all around. And I'm just sitting with my back up against. Would you the start tree. crying if you kept talking about no, it? No, 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 because it was good. It was good. It was how it was, ha it was my you happy place. Crying, uh, quick. And then I, I sat there and I said, "Is it is it wrong to have more than one place to go to?" Oh. And she said, "No, not at all. Do you have another place?" I said, "Yeah." So I went back down. When I get down to the bottom, I open the door, and there I am. I'm on the second floor landing of a ballroom full of people, and they're waiting for me to get down there. And, and I'm just going to go. They're all my friends. They're, they're waiting for me. I'm going to interact with all of them. They were there waiting for me, and I felt comfortable. That was my comfort zone, being around people. Wow. So it was both sides, either by myself, around my family, or being thrust out with a bunch of people. And I, I, was, I was comfortable either place. Interesting. Interesting. And in school, um, you, played, you played baseball in school? No. <laughs> literally, I, I, I started. I started my freshman year playing softball. I mean, playing, oh, playing. No, 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 no. no. Huh? I started playing baseball. The pink ladies. What was your first? And, and as they were cutting, cutting players. <laughs> last day of cuts, I got cut. Uh, freshman baseball, and the coaches. Man, told, you get cut in freshman yeah, yeah. baseball. And the coach told me, he says, "Son, he says, I'm sorry. He says, you know, you, go you can hit good." He says, you're, I was a catcher. He says, you're great behind a plate. He says, but I'm building this team on speed. And, son, you ain't got no yeah, speed. <laughs> so, I bam. Got, how about that? I got cut. Building that team on speed. It's, we're talking about the, <laughs> the, the fucking New York Yankees. They're <laughs> freshmen in high school. I got cut from freshman football. And a team that I think told everybody yes. And I thought it would, must have been a mistake. I don't know what happened. I was so I wanted to play football so bad, and I was so sad. I rode my bike down to the school on Saturday. I looked at the list again. Damn, they see? Yep, cried myself. To, so so I, I didn't cry. I, I felt bad. I was embarrassed. But I, I didn't I cry. I think that's what made me funny. I think that from then on, I was always like, I again, friends with everybody. I remember running for student body treasurer. Oh, there junior. you go. Fucking my money. Yeah. <laughs> and I got. Did you give out gum like in the movies? No. Nope. All the people I made that very, fun, very funny posters. <laughs> what Pedro, <did> they? <laughs> Pedro for president. Ask your mom if my dad was an artist. What? So ask your yeah, mom. Ask your mom. Um, vote <laughs> Al Madrigal for that. <laughs> Um, and then I won. There were 1,300 kids in our school. 
I got 1,200 of the votes. Um, wow. And uh, the other kid transferred. Uh, I got 100. You and scared him out of the school? Dude, the wow. vice principal grabbed me and he goes, hey, man. He goes, I've been doing this a long time. I just want to show you something. He goes, no one's ever done this. What the fuck? Uh, Do you think that, that was your peak? What's that? <laughs> that was your peak. Oh, I was salutatorian. <laughs> I gave a speech. That's what made me want to do stand-up comedy is like, No, but did you, I crushed. Did you want to do politics? Did you want to do... I just, want to do I just knew stuff? I needed to do something because I got cut from all these sports teams. I didn't. I wasn't. I was looking for activities. I was like Jason Schwartzman in Rushmore, that movie where he's got in all the clubs. Yeah, I was the worst possible student, but I was in every club. I I wrote every single rally that they put on. Had we killed? Um, I was telling guys I had a clipboard. I'm like, go now, Gene, hit it. Uh, like fucking, you're on. Uh, I can tell yeah. guys. It was always like. God. Damn, what yeah. the hell's going on here? Uh, dude, I, I didn't have any other skills. <laughs> so I was like horrible. What would you say? How would you describe that? What's that person? I was like? horrible at math. Well, I was I was a part of that yeah. person. I did all the I wrote all the rallies. I hosted all the rallies. I did all of that stuff. I, but I I just I, I think I genuinely just liked people watching me <laughs> at the time and like getting a reaction was everything. So it was like and you were cute as a button. I would I would assume. I mean I Which looked. Never, I looked. Oh, he still is. Still is. Still is. Is cute as a button. By the way, I, I yeah. look, I've no, looked I, ten I, years old for a out. long time. Yeah, long time. I'm 32 now, and I'm like I'd still. Holy like, shit! But I mean, this one don't look like a little yeah. marionette. Everybody. I was going to ask, am I, the, am I the youngest person to be on the show? How long did you? Uh, what, what was your first gig then? Uh, well, so I, that's where I did get lucky. My mom didn't want me to be an actor. But she you guys didn't, didn't want move, the you didn't live here, though. That's the thing. I grew up in Covina, which is only oh. about 30 minutes east from here. Oh, sure. Yeah. So I, I was pretty much from here. Um, we moved a lot, you know, up until I was like 10. And then it was from 10 on, it was Covina. Covina. But my mom never wanted me to be an actor because of the rejection and stuff. So it, it took a long time for me to convince her to let me do it. And would she tell you no? Like she would say, do you two remember conversations with I'm not say, joking with you, my mom. She would say, no, Matt, no, I'm not she, gonna do it, you're not gonna do it. She said it's too much, I can't bear it. I, to this day, if you were to ask my mom what she'd want me to do, she wants me to work at Taco Bell down the street. And that's a legitimate thing. Like she, I think my mother would love if I still lived at home and worked at Taco Bell, that's her go-to. Well, you can always come work at Taco Bell down the street. I'm like, yeah, but I'm, I'm here now. Yeah, but you know, just in case it doesn't work out, go work at Taco wow. Bell. We Covina, that's family. not far from the VFW. We got to go to the VFW and hang out with them. There's a lot of people for you to talk to there. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be nice to every single hey, one. So, 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 yeah, so um, I guess you needed her to drive you to an audition, right? Yeah. She finally gave in when I was like 13. And that's that was. And it was years of saying, saying to her? It, like, was, it was years of saying no, and then seventh grade she finally said yes. That's when I went to did all that but I didn't really book anything until like four months before I graduated high school and that was when I got lucky because I wasn't going to do anything I had shit going on like I, w I wasn't going to college I wasn't wow. doing anything it's and I got like lucky it said, it's almost like the universe said I know that if I don't give you something right now you're going to go do something else and yep. I can never get you back to this place where I have your full attention. So the show that I ended up booking, I knew the cast director well. I went in and I told her straight up, I said, this is the last time you're going to see me. And she said, well, you're quitting? And I said, no, I'm going to book this. And if I don't, I'm done. And hilariously oh. enough, it was a Nickelodeon show and I ended up being on that for a real long time. And right before I went into it, show, I got man? busted. Don't, don't say fucking I was on a show called True Jackson VP on Nickelodeon. Busted. And I, <laughs> he, <laughs> Al actually was <laughs> on that show as well for an episode. <laughs> I played a security guard, a Peruvian security guard with Johnny Sanchez, two dim-witted security guards. Johnny he sprayed Sanchez. me in the face with mace. Yeah, we maced his ass. What was it instead of mace? Hairspray? I don't know. What, silly string or something? It's probably water. It was probably water. Yeah. Oh, so you guys, <laughs> so the, the day that you guys showed up for work, you were like, hey! Well, I saw his name on the thing, and I was like, holy shit, I've worked with him. He was on True Jackson. Yeah. Which is crazy, because, go on, Steve Toblowski played my dad. He played a dad to oh, wow. the other guy on Rusty, that show. Rusty, R-A-D, was the AD of that show. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. So I actually had, there's a few people. How that, many that episodes did you guys do? 56. Oh, that's not. We did 56 in, in less than two years. That's not a lot, yeah. Because they had to shoot as many as possible before we grew up. Because yeah, the that's... girls were still young, but I was 18 Who at the time. Who was True Jackson? Kiki Palmer. From Nope. No? She's in Nope. She was in the movie with Nope. The, with the Jordan Peele movie oh. that just came out. She's, she's great. She hosts uh, Password with Jimmy Fallon on NBC. And, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, 
Who else was there? Who, who? We had Greg Proops was like the owner of the, oh, Proops, the company. Yeah. That's uh, hilarious. Yeah. It sounds just Paul weird. F. Tompkins yeah. was on a bunch of episodes. Well, that's interesting because uh, the showrunner was loved stand-up comedy. Well, it was and it was during the writer's strike of 08. So all of our writers were network writers. It was like people who wrote Just Shoot Me and all this stuff. And so like all mm. the writers were network writers and had a lot of connections. So if you go and look at all of our guest stars, like we had a lot of crazy guest stars on that show. Which was not normal for Nickelodeon at the like time. Like who, who was on the show? Uh, we had, I mean, we had Will Smith's daughter, and he was there the whole time. We had Andy Richter. We had um, Jesus. Who else did we have? We it felt like every week it was somebody different. Paul different F. Tompkins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Melissa Roush, I think, might have done a Melissa Roush. Mm. I'm not sure. Was your, is your wife in the business as well? My wife is a teacher, school teacher. I'm a one head shop per household <clears throat> family. Your girlfriend's is she an actress? She's an actress, yeah. She left today. Off to Vancouver to shoot something for two oh. weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Will you How uh, is that, man? How is how is that uh, dating an actress, like a working actress? Well, it's tough because when you're both actors and you're both not working, it it can affect your relationship because you both don't, you know, it's that whole like you know they're not going to leave you, so you take out all your problems on them. And so then when you're both not working, you're both just having problems with each other and you have to keep reminding each other that it's like, oh no, it's because we're not working and we're trying to work. Yeah. But it's tough cuz there's it's times not, it's it not, goes it's not months. the solid it's not the most solid foundation to no, there's no security. to build a relationship. I mean, I mean, there's zero security. Everybody's always, you know, when are we gonna have kids? I'm like, dude, I, I don't even know if I'm gonna have a job next week. So like, I gotta, right. like, there's no security. Don't in say this that business. to L. That motherfucker start crying. <laughs> if you're under the fucking curtain. <laughs> the curtain good, good, good. <laughs> there's no security. So how are you? So you know, you can't. There's no. There's no. I'm gonna have a nine to five from here on out. It's. It's. I'm hoping but I have a job it, next month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So. First, in, can I can I interject and say shut yeah. up, Aaron, real quick? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you see me. Whenever he, I get him to laugh, I know I'm way over the fucking the line. Of, <laughs> so. 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 Um, when people are doing stuff like that, you know, and uh, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty. I would say uncertainty in a relationship, you know, because. You know, maybe somebody wants to be a teacher and then one household is working or maybe they're both working, they both work at t- part time and then they manage to keep it together. You know, or sometimes, uh, you know, a woman will say, you know, well, I would I kind of want a guy that's a little bit more secure Stable. in what his future is going to be and not in a stand up comedian or an actor, you know, so um well, they can't ever pull that car because of the fact that we're both they're both stable. in there. Yeah. So it's great. Yeah, man. That's the plus side. But it's um, funny. I mean, th- a week ago we were talking. And she's like, I just haven't worked and I'm, I'm losing it. And I'm like, listen, the rest of the year, it's a wash. It's all good. And the moment she said it was all good, woke up the next morning, got an offer to do a movie in Vancouver, making more money than she has in a few years. Like it's it's that's the whole thing about the business. Mood itself. immediately like, it changes. Like oh, 100 percent. It's like all of a sudden we're happy again. It's like and at, it, what, at what point do we say, you know, um, we're going to move on? Do you guys is, does an actor does an actor look at the end? Of, of a possibility of his life as an actor, or does he think he's going to be an actor for life? I got to say, I think about you when you were on the radio all the time. Yep. Like, I, I, because you were like, you, you were like, I'm out of here. I'm not doing this anymore. You were like, I'm not going to do, you went to yes. the radio, no more acting. I'm not going to give up on the George Lopez show. And that's when it all happened, right? Is that? That's right. So. I just know I need to stay the course, but I've been, you know, you just like, I, I'm trying to persevere as much as I can, and uh, it's tough, dude. It's it's hard, especially, I got a kid in college. Did you give any of these wonderful traits to your kids? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I know, but yeah. kids have something, I mean. I did. My son has a tremendous amount of anxiety. He does? Yeah. Is that, okay, so. Um, and I'm worried hmm. about it. You know, it's like, because. Uh, anxiety is. I, I, you know, I fuck with anxiety. I, I make fun of it, but I'm really just as a comedian making fun of it. I know it's something very, very serious. And the worst part, I think, is maybe culturally, like where we come from, where somebody would have it, and then people like me would make fun of it, and then you know the butler turns the fucking doorknob 89 times before he can go outside. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I, I'd never gone to therapy. I asked uh, Matt, "Are you okay with me mentioning this?" Like, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. I asked Matt. I go, "I need to talk to somebody because a lot. Of, I don't know if you know this. A lot of comedians have been dying. I've I've got a lot of comic friends that have been croaking left and right, and one was kept coming up in my memories. Just it was. Can you say Jack Knight, a uh, young black comic who I worked with a lot. Young, and very young, very young, and very talented. And you know how your iPhone does memories and your iPhones? Mm-hmm. 
haunting me. Just different pictures, nonstop. Okay, you know how your iPhone does uh, memories? Yeah, haunting me. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I like. But doesn't it? It, but it, it just it, it got that one got me. That one put. But me in over a way, isn't it saying let's enjoy these times? Let's enjoy the moment. Sure. Yeah. There's like a, they put music. I'm more to surprised it. that you haven't gone to therapy. The fact that you yeah, were like but, I've never that's done. That's what therapy. I'm saying. Like, I got a great I, guy. I, I was well, thought, everybody I was, should go to therapy. I thought I was everybody. weak and didn't have the time and like. Have you gone to therapy? Fuck no. See, you went. I grew up with him. You've never, him. No been through, you never, you've never gone to therapy. No, Even no. after all the like the stuff you've the seen, and that dude no. went to fucking. Be, he was in Vietnam. Man. I mean, no. listen, that dude you got it. You got it. I guess that's crazy. No. I grew up no. with Never. basically <laughs> him as my dad. <laughs> would, right no, wouldn't, wouldn't even think about it. <laughs> well, it's not that I, I culturally. But I, you I know, what Gil's fucked. He went, I, Gil I went to be a count. comedian. If you get if that motherfucker, if, if we, if in here we said Gil, there's 15 minutes of material that you can use in here. That he'd be out there at the Ha Ha Cafe. He would be uh, Romo, not Momo. Romo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was asked. He if I would loves do it. to be on stage. I, I, he wants I to be a comedian. I, I love that. I would try, but I, I'm not looking for anything because I told. I asked my wife, you know, and we've been married a day and a half. It'll be uh, the 26th of this year of next month. Will be 52 years. 52. So I asked her. I said, "What do you think if I get on stage? You know, no, do a little comedy that?" And she didn't. She really wasn't excited about it. No. She didn't want me to. Nah. Do it. No. You know what? I. You know what? I think you should do it, man. You know, you're a writer, right? Yeah. Let, let's let's write Gil some. Let's write Gil some material. Piece yeah. of cake. Dude, I could. We could. I could knock out 15. Look at Tom. How you look like? Right? You know, like an old lesbian. <laughs> Oh, opening line. <laughs> I know what everybody's Hi, thinking. Hi, you might have bought some potted plants from me. <laughs> you know, I'm... Uh, Haven't I... I know what you guys are thinking. Haven't you seen me at the dog park? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, you really would, right? Like, like I mean... What would you talk a, about? It, 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 it's a beautiful... Isn't it... Um, like, let's say, because... Isn't it a beautiful thing to like be introduced on the show and you run out there and you walk out there and that audience is there and through your own two eyes, like you see all of the things that you've seen other people do, Seinfeld and you've seen, you know, uh, Desi Arnaz, you've seen, you know, the where they do backstage where the, where the audience, I mean, news radio, I saw Phil Hart, all that stuff that you go out there and it's where, it's the Mount Rushmore of, of sitcoms where a uh, cast is introduced, and they all walk out there, and everybody's introduced. Isn't it the, the most incredible thing to perform in front of a live audience and be introduced? I really think yeah. that the reason my wife, her, her biggest against, not because I'm going to get in trouble or do anything, it's just that it's like, Gil, you get enough attention, you know, I go out, you know. <laughs> it's I, not your mom. Gil, I, yeah. I speak. You I've don't need to swim. You get enough exercise at school. I'm a speaker, <laughs> and, and so I showed her. I was in uh, Las Vegas, 5,000 people in attendance, and I, I go out there and I speak. It's put on by Oxygen. It's uh, CrimeCon. And so they 45 minutes. And, I mean, it's all done professionally. They're video, they've got a big clock right there to count it down how I'm doing. Mm -hmm. CrimeCon, man. So I, I, I speak, and when I'm done, first I got a standing ovation. Oh my God! And people are standing, and I'm saying, "Oh shit, hold on!" I get my vid, I get my camera. And I said, "Let me, I want to film this. Yeah, Look at yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Capture this." And moment. so, all said and done, I come back, and they send me a professional copy of the video, and I'm watching it online. And so I said, "Dear, you want to see this?" You know. So she watches with me, and when she was done, I said, "What do you think?" She says, "Well, it was all right, but why do you have to make fun of me?" Because I talk about her while I'm doing straight stuff. But I've also learned uh, from a professor that I had uh, who required more work than any professor I ever had, he used humor as a vehicle to get his point across. Because when you're funny, mm -hmm. you guys, people are listening because they don't want to miss a joke. They don't want to miss the funny part. Mm -hmm. So they're paying attention to you. And then you get that big roar laugh. So when I sit there and say, yeah, my wife moved out August the 8th and she and I ain't coming back until he's in custody. And that was the truth. She moved out of the house, took the kids with her, she's gone. So I said, so now I tell her at least once a year, hey, we got the wrong guy, just to see her move out again. <laughs> and that must kill. Yeah. 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 And, and so everybody laughs and she said, but why do you have to make fun of me? And so she, How much uh, you get paid to do this? I got thing? a name for you if you're a big comedian. What's that? Juan Candy. 
<laughs> John Candy. You know, I had a nephew. He used to, used to think I was John Candy. He says, oh, you look just like John hey, Candy. See? But, uh, um, but I think, yeah, you see how he wants I bet, but the, the But the perfect interjection of fact and fiction is stand-up. Yeah, it's making it fun is. Of things. Making fun of things that you can, telling a good story. And like with Jeffrey Dahmer, I said, you know, Mexicans can't be cannibals because when we get Manula, we take the pata out. You know, you, you, you do that. Or we story. won't even eat each other. How are we going to eat somebody we don't know? <laughs> and, and, and it's easy. And if you're telling the truth, it's easy. It's easy to tell the truth. When you're lying, you have to make shit up. Then it becomes this is my new one. If she don't eat menudo, she won't eat a noodle. Menudo's ah! <laughs> <laughs> an asshole. Uh, that, and you can have that one, man. Then you open that one. <laughs> but I mean, he, you know, so so I think in a sense, people want to be accepted in whatever term. It doesn't matter whether it's 150,000 people or 15 people, five people. Oh, the feeling that you get. When you do new stuff and it kills, yes. oh, the, is it, it, dude. It's gotta be I great. mean, I remember like walking up opposite of lady, like just skipping my step, like fucking, yeah. hey, 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 how are you? I uh, love it so much. <laughs> like I, I mean, was, I did stand up one time, and it, I've never felt a high like that in my life. Be not even acting, or no, no. I did. I went up at the haha at an open mic one oh, time, shit. and my buddy convinced me, and I was like, "Sure." How did you prepare the stuff? Did you say I'm gonna off my top dude, of my head? Dude, I have. Or? I've got like 150 things in my like notes under stand up, and I could just basically Let's give him the gill. Give him a go. Give him the gill. Hey, why, give why him the gill. Yeah, why, maybe. Why don't I'm not thin. I'm not pretty. <laughs> why don't you go? Let's do all. Let's all do stand up. Let's. Dude, roll. I was thinking about it today. I was like, it'd be so funny if we could just as a show just go on the road, everybody doing. Stand -up I think mine did show. stand up too. Some. She writes jokes. So yeah, you know, mine's it's there. Well, mine's fucked up too, man. She's got all kinds of anxiety too. Like, oh, fucking weird and deep breaths. I didn't take a deep <laughs> breath till I was in my fucking forties. You know, everybody's like, <sighs> dude, I, I didn't take a fucking deep breath. The fuck, somebody said, the fucking Chicanos, you're all fucking stressed <laughs> out. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Is this a right there? Your fucking rib cage is, your fucking ribs are touching each other. You're so so fucking riddled with anxiety. Will, like I've become, you touch a fucking chica, they're all they're all fucking wound up. Yeah. They're all hard. Their bodies are all hard. I woke up in Got the middle of the night. Got that mummification, motherfucker. Seven years old. You you sleep through the night? Uh, yeah. Since I just started wetting the bed. No. <laughs> I woke up at three a.m. <laughs> 3 a.m. 3 a.m. is the fucking witch's hour, witching too, by the hour way. Witching hour, too. Yeah. Just going. Haunted house. Like, couldn't shut man, it off. Man, what the fuck, man? I, I, I have to take a sleep gummy to go to sleep every single night, or I will wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning like clockwork. But I think everybody does that. Do you, you, do you try take suppository. I, I smoke. Huh? A try suppository. Week. about 8 p.m. on. <laughs> hey, what's, what's the phone number for the show again? Since we haven't used it. In. Uh, do, you, do you still take gummies the same? I haven't had to lately. You know, it's, oh, really? I, and I, I haven't had to because I ran out. I got a bunch of stuff. I'm, I'll bring you some stuff. All right. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot, a lot of stuff. Gummies will put me out. Is yeah. it, what is it? Do uh, we still have it? 533 1843. 533 1843. Is that Eight, what it says? 818? Yeah. It's on the screen right there. Okay. Family of Orioles. That's good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you know, if you're out there, you know, um, call us and leave a message of what you take before you sleep. If anybody takes a sedative or what kind of sedative or if you take Unison or what or you or if you go to sleep naturally, which Yeah, that's it, what I want to know. It, let's see if, yeah, how there, many people there's something out there. I just you don't have to be a long message. Just say, you know, I, I use this, I go to sleep or my wife does Sleep's this. Sleep like a baby. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever taken something like Ambien or anything no, like that? No. No, no. I, I try to not okay, take Ambien's any. fucked up. You though. haven't taken like any medications at all. I really don't like pills one bit. I Oh, that's why you're them. all fucked up. You got to take something, man. Can I ask why? I don't know. I've always never wanted to like. I take a, a cholesterol medication, and that's about it. That's it. That's but you've never taken like Xanax. You've never taken anything I take, for... for travel. I my doctor because I had, oh horrible travel anxiety. Um, because Man, but that's all. <laughs> but no, you have to, but with you the need family to therapy know. for sure. <laughs> Listen now, I'm finding out a whole nother. If this was uh, if this was Love Is Blind on Netflix. We fucking be breaking up right now. <laughs> I wouldn't no, be I just, walking down the altar. I'll fucking I have a hard time making it through the airport with my family. So we figured out a routine <laughs> um, because I was so used to traveling as a stand-up comic <laughs> that I... Don't look at me like that. No, I'm... I, 
<laughs> I'm trying. I always tell you the I, truth. But I love that. But what seems so natural is so complicated now. Yeah. I, 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 I'll always tell everybody the truth. I'm not going to yeah. like it. So I um, had a hard time traveling with my family because it stresses me out. I needed My dad had it so bad. Uh, I had a hard time traveling my family too because I might see some viejas. <laughs> 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 what are you, fancy meeting you here. So your dad had anxiety as well. Oh my oh, god! There you so this go. is it's it's in the Dude, family thing. We had a uh, uh, we were on a cruise ship because my my parents finally started making a little bit. That's of money. the worst place for a motherfucker with anxiety. Dude, <laughs> it was the, the worst. Of the They're coming to get us. Dude, we were in Cozumel. I met a girl. Um, I was like 22. Met this girl, and uh. she had been drinking, but her parents weren't there. And she got really fucked up. She puked in the bathroom. And then... All seems natural so far. <laughs> I, I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. I gotta tell you. Nothing up, right there. Nothing about that seems out of the fucking usual. Girl All drinking right. without her parents. She threw up in the bathroom. All okay. Right. What so, else? You called and got her some uh, toast? I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we made out. And that she was... You made yes, out after she, she threw up? Uh, no, before. Okay. She was um, <laughs> gorgeous. I mean, just way out of my league. I was so happy. And then... Uh, her parents weren't showing up. I hear, mm, <laughs> mm. my dad shows up, and I go, "Hey, dad, we got to deal with this. Like, we can't what just." Do you, fucking what do you mean? Leave you her. heard your dad had his own fucking horn? <laughs> no, it's a boat. <laughs> That's what happens when your boat's about to like. You got everybody up from the cruise ship. You better get back here. We're leaving. So the, when the boat it's is at warning. dock oh, in, oh, in oh. Cozuma in Mexico, oh, oh, okay, yeah. it's the warning. Like, you get three. And now everybody make it back to the boat. So wait, you weren't Mexico. on the boat. We weren't on the boat. Okay. Her we're parents at, were on in the boat. Cozumel. No. We just met this family at the beach. They said, My daughter wants to hang out with kids her age. You guys should take her into oh. town. And then she started drinking with us. My little brother's 15, dancing on the table. They would put tequila bottles down and just mark it with tape on the side how much you drank, like salt and pepper. And so, that's fucking amazing. So we're just anymore. pouring tequila into each other's mouths. My, whole, what? My brother's 15 dancing Whoa, on the table. Oh, man. And so everyone's wasted. We were having such a good time. The entire bar moved over to us. People are partying hard. Then we're, time to go. So Al Madrigal with anxiety, here's that fucking thing. And I go, Dad, we got to deal with this girl. Her parents, uh, uh, her parents aren't here. We can't just leave her. And he goes... Fucker, I'm not missing that. <laughs> he goes, I'm not missing that fucking boat. <laughs> Dude, Al Madrigal, that's what I was like. I didn't go to theory. Al Madrigal was a senior, was a brutal. He said, like, Fucker, <laughs> I'm missing that boat. Then he leans in, speaks Spanish to the cab driver, puts her in the cab, and he goes, Do you know where you live, honey? He goes, Say the words. And he like <laughs> holds up her head, and she goes, uh, some condo complex, and he looks at the guy. Oh and in Spanish, I asked what he said, and he goes, in Spanish, he looks at the cab driver, and he goes, she gets home. Anything happens to her, I will come here, I will find you, and I will fucking murder you. Do you understand? Like that? And God fuck. damn, man. Yeah. I mean... Dude, I it, it, super intense on both. Like my, my uncle I and mean, my dad were crazy. So you're your unpacking. The taxi that. driver said, no. "Yeah, see, pin there, I'll take her. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. <laughs> fucking Gil said that. You bring me some fucking chorizo. <laughs> and it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking right temperature is, and Papa's mixed in. I will fucking murder you. That's right. Dude, they were and just in an airport. But, but was your dad like that? Was your dad? Was he like that, or intense. you saw another side of? No, no, no. He said, "Listen." Fucker <laughs> tells the cab driver, I'll, I'll fuck him. If she doesn't get to where she's going, I will come back and I will fucking murder you. No, let's go. Let's go make the boat. Like, that's that's it. Wow, and just man. went. I that's just went. it. <sighs> you made the boat, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> but, like, if I'm in an airport and they, they start boarding and my wife goes, I want I need to go get a water. And so we've been sitting there for it. an hour you and a half. I lose my mind. I was like, or or I gotta go. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. I'm like, we've been sitting here for a fucking hour and a half. I don't understand. Yeah. yeah. So now, I think I think yeah. So any constraint of time, I think gets out. Yeah. Dude, yeah. I, fucking when I got married with Anne, you know, she we would be flying, and I and she go, what time's the flight? I said seven thirty. She goes, ah, we should leave the house at six fifteen. I'm like, bitch, how are we gonna get to LAX and check it? Leave at six fifteen. We'll make it there by six forty. I was like, we're not gonna make it to LAX at fucking six forty five. If you leave at six fifteen, we're fucking. Li yeah. And and that that's that would drive me crazy. Yes. So I would say, listen, I, and I would go 
early, but she's not a morning person, and now you're trying to get somebody that doesn't get up till fucking one o'clock in the afternoon to get up at 5.45 in the morning. It's not gonna happen. <laughs> so now we got a system. <laughs> and what is that? I take they the family, if we go to LAX, no, I drop the whole family off, I bring their bags, da da da, I, I go and da, da, da. I, I will take the car to a, one of those quick park places, and then they make their slow ass way through the airport and their slow ass like fucking just time. <laughs> and I show up, you know, in the bus and then I have clear uh, and you don't have anything pre-check. To, to, you don't and I got my backpack. I'll take my own bag. So my wife doesn't have to deal with have it. Have you thought about taking a car, uh, uh, having a car come and pick you up and take you? But then I'd have to go with, with them, them in the airport. Oh, so that's the whole point. The whole point is, is you that. go through and you do your oh, slow. That makes sense. You don't have your license ready. You don't have, like, all yeah, that yeah, shit yeah, yeah. that fucking makes me crazy. Like, yeah, I know yeah. they're going to look for my license, my license <sighs> out. Okay. Like, I got all my shit ready to go. Right. Like, so that's what makes me nuts. Okay. That's I'm just like Clint Eastwood in Gran Torino. All I ever do is, uh, <laughs> I just look at her and uh, that's all I do. It's difficult to travel with people, though. I with, just throw it with, on autopilot, dude. I know it's going to be terrible, so I just like I half leave. Will you fly up there to Vancouver to see your to no. see your girlfriend? No, because I got to fly to North Carolina, and I'm already I'm stressed about that. This place my mom got was built in 1880. It has oh, not wow. been touched since, oh my and God. she just found pictures in an attic of dead men naked in the field with their names on the back and then the word dead. Because that's what this family did, apparently. What and I'm like, I got to go stay Daniel Boone is going. Hey, I'm fucking going with you. Eh? I got to go stay a week at this place. And I'm terrified. She's talking about wolf spiders, yeah. snakes in the in the in the rooms. I'm like, are you what the fuck? Have I you seen do pictures that. of it? Has it is, is it livable? Dude, the place, oh, the place. It's, it's not incredible. like the place they recorded Led Zeppelin. Too, by the way. <laughs> no, the Led place Zeppelin is incredible and it was... looks incredible. Is but it a log cabin or something. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like one big house and then there's like six outbuildings and it's on twelve acres in the woods. It's like it's beautiful, but. She's she's just she she didn't tell any of us about what was in it. She didn't even tell my stepdad. My stepdad got there, and you know the master bedroom is eight inches lower. It's got to be raised. There's all these different things that need to be taken care of that he wasn't aware of. Was it a camp, a work camp, or something? No, it's a, the same family who owned it from when it got built owned it until now, Hillbillies. and they finally got rid of it. Yeah, that's a trip, so. man. That's a trip. Like what what's that in her though? What's what's, what's that? that in her? Like to say we're gonna move to this place that dude. I I she got held up in a bank six years ago. Gun to head. Wow. Give me all the money. The manager who's supposed to do it did nothing. Locked himself in the room. And so for like fifteen minutes she had a gun to her head. And when that finished, she was like, I'm done. I gotta. I can't live in a city anymore. So okay, she has been trying to run away ever since. And North Carolina is where her parents are from. Wow. She finally found the opportunity. Found the perfect place and got that and now she's going through all the stuff that these people didn't take and she keeps finding these pictures of like whoa literally na- she, she's told she's like i pulled open this box and there's three different photos of a naked man dead in a field which i would assume is the field they're on and then it's like jimmy dickey dead she's like i don't know i'm like what the fuck smallpox yeah. 1832 <laughs> i hate that shit i am terrified yeah. of hillbillies and white people <laughs> i swear to god i really am i, I am you like what that. Said? <laughs> i'm terrified of hillbillies and white people <laughs> <laughs> Burbank, cabrón, there's all, fuck all over the place all um, uh, uh, i would say go well, away from a cracker barrel if, if you're not <laughs> interested in what's what's cooking in the neighborhood or whatever the fuck the Applebee's. Oh God! That's but but, but um, is it? Uh, do you have any time of the of the day that you feel clarity? Like in the morning, are you stressed? The Buddhist thing to do is in the morning is to is to lay there at least for five minutes before you get out of bed and contemplate what's good and what's bad in your life, and what you would like to do, and what you would like to leave behind mm. in the first five minutes of your eyes opening. And it changes the way you think. Mm. Do you don't do get that out of morning? bed? I do it. That's for the get, chinos. Don't. We didn't do that in my Mexican the house. The chinos, hey, they're they're still they're, they're way more than us, so they must be doing it right. You know, chinito, that little thing behind you, that little. No, he's not. Uh, <laughs> but but that's what they do. They 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 con- he, the monk told us to contemplate before you get out of bed. Think about where you are in life, what you like, what you don't like, what you would like to see happen. And the things that you would like to leave behind, and it's five minutes. Can Before I, he said meditate for eleven, but that's hard to do. Yeah. But the, but the contemplation. Don't get out of bed until you've laid there, 
open or closed and just do it, think about it, and then get it only in the morning, not at night. That's easy for you to do because you're by yourself. No, if, no, that you have to find your, you have to make your time. Yeah. Just make your so, partner understand. Yeah, it's very difficult if you've got the wife next to you saying, hey, honey, or hey, uh, what in about this? In five minutes, I'll do it. Yeah. Your wife, do an impression of your wife so she can hear it on the pocket. <laughs> no, we, 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 we cut it out, though. We, she doesn't, she we doesn't cut a lot, we cut a lot oh, of this shit out. She doesn't listen to it much I because she's a... I was more in trouble. Like, yeah, she, she doesn't listen to it much because she's a, she knows who I am. So you're saying you guys talk first thing in the morning? Yeah, we Right off the bat? Yeah. We I, I wake up at least an hour before her, and I'll just get on the iPad. I won't wake her up, won't turn in, so just put my ear paid up, and I get on the iPad when she gets up. Then it's good morning and good morning, and you want coffee? Yeah, I'll have coffee. Thought do you think that's asked. overstimulation in the morning, like, to start like that? I th- I'd say do the five minutes. I'll, I'll try the five but no minutes. But po- no iPad. No iPad. Leave it. I'll try it. Because I, it's I, I, overstimulation. First thing I do is grab my phone. And look that's a, that is me. apparently like the absolute worst thing you yeah, can do Yeah, because you're the taking in yeah. stuff, not putting stuff out there. Yeah. yeah that's, you I'll, also, I'll you have a seance room in your house, though, so you already got some stuff attached to you. Yeah. Uh, 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 throw fucking yeah, dude, you and George, two peas in a pot. Uh, I didn't know. I uh, I was telling Momo about. But he has a. Se- I don't have a seance room in my house. He has a seance room in his house. You I'm got turn all it into of you, a, uh, everything's in your house. Yeah, I'm gonna turn it into a bar, like a. a Hang out. Momo told him not to go in and ask questions. The first thing he does is walk in yeah. and start asking questions. Tell, tell everybody what happened. To, uh, all right, so I do the Paragordo podcast um, live. Hilarious, it's so f- funny. Um, like we had a, a bunch of what were the questions they were asking you well the Latinas that took the mic and got up and spoke and talked about their supernatural experiences was one of the funniest fucking things I've ever seen in my life everyone had to tell you where they were living at the time so it was like I was living in Norwalk and uh, then I oh you did it right there at yeah, Bellflower then yeah we did it that yeah, the yeah. I was uh, I was living in Rosemead at the time and so uh, and it was very funny so Mo, I'm telling Momo about this seance room because they used to do Ouija board. The house was built in 1958, and in the 60s, they would do Ouija board in this room. And so it had this chained bench in there. It was a funky room, wormwood, and they also had, like, their wine cellar in there. But it is sunken down with cement floors. It's creepy. And that's where I'd go uh, find rats or anything like that. That's where they would sneak in. And so I uh, what? <laughs> I'm scared to death of rats. <laughs> really? Yo, you've really. Seen, you know how many dead bodies you've seen and you're scared Seri- of rats? Seriously. You ever seen that cartoon where the elephant jumps up on the table because there's a rat? So <laughs> I killed. I, I was like so it. proud of my son, too, because we had the last rat that we killed, um, it was it got caught in a glue trap, but it was still alive. And I go, Lorenzo, I'm sorry, buddy. I need you to man up. I need you to hold it down with this broom. I'm going to get a hammer. And I'm going to bludgeon this thing real quick. And you yeah. wonder where the anxiety comes oh, from? Gee, go. Why would you sure you You're over here having them hold it down while you smash it with I a hammer, bro? You lift it up every once in a while. It sounded like the, right, uh, the rat was like, come on, man. I got kids. Come on, bro. Let me know. No, that's how Jeffrey Dahmer started hammering rats. Shut up. I don't know anything about it. So I had to go, tut, 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 and give it a little whack. But anyway, I go in there. I'm like, this is all bullshit. Momo was telling me that that's, he released a bunch of spirits in there. So I go in there, shut the door, shut off the lights. I'm standing there in the pitch dark. And I go, so, is anybody here? Huh? Show yourself. And I swear to God, it was like, oh. you never watched a horror film before? Oh. My hair. And I, I, I thought it was just because I was scared and it was colder in there. But I swear to God, the hair on my arms stood up straight. Like that, just junk. I've done the para, paranormal uh, Paragordo. Uh, Paragordo podcast, but only at Momo's place. Uh, I've been up on stage with him up there at the... Uh, well, he packed it out. He killed. And they did a thing on aliens. It was, And he had AJ up there with him. He knows what he's talking about. And they did stuff. And he says, I want to ask you some questions. You come on stage. Will you do it? I said, I'll do it. So here are the questions I want to ask. I said, don't tell me the questions. Ask them up there. I'll answer them. And so he said, do you believe in aliens? I said, no. And he said, why don't you? I said, I don't look up. I don't give a shit what's going on up there. It's not my, not my world. I stay, stay down here. And he said, okay. He said, what would you do if there was an alien in your house coming down the, coming down the hallway? You're the only one there. What are you going to do? I said, I'm going to get the fuck out and go out my window. I said, I ain't white. I'm not going to go up there and say, hey, what are you doing here? Who are you? Why? I'm going to get the fuck out. I'm, I ain't going to fight that thing. 
And he says, okay, well, there's an alien in there, and all of a sudden you're getting a blowjob right there. You're by yourself. What are you going to do? I said, well, i got a couple of minutes to spare. <laughs> you know, they don't need to be in a hurry. And so I, I've done that shit with him, and it, it was fun. It was hilarious. Yeah, really funny. Um, but you never had a um, – you ever thought that Richard Ramirez has come back to you anywhere? No. You ever felt his presence? No. I had a nightmare about him once, but that was that was it. Was it a vivid nightmare, like he was in, in body? Yeah. And it, it, I was never had one of those. It's 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 a very rare uh, dream, where it's almost like if we were sitting here talking and you're talking to yeah. Richard Ramirez. We were we we, we were in he a came to visit I'm tra- you. I'm transporting him. We're in a courthouse. We got him, and now it's just me and him. And I said, came to visit. you know the drill. Don't fuck around. You know because I'll I'll fucking I'll fucking blast you. I won't mess around. And said, yeah, yeah, I'm not. And then we got in this, we got in this fucking elevator. And all of a sudden, he starts fucking around, and I go to blast him, and the fucking bullets are going plank, plank, and he's fucking laughing at me. Then it turned into an instant nightmare. And then I woke up. Then I got scared. I came to vi- he came to I, visit you. I pissed in my pants. He, you did? No. But you know what? He he came to visit you. His spirit came to visit yeah, you. Yeah, fuck him. That no. was his unfinished business. That's an unfinished business. And him and I, the reason he would need, maybe, maybe he did, maybe he did. You guys fucked around with each other? But, but we, got we, we, we got yeah, along. We got along. Yeah, kidding back each other back yeah, and forth. Yeah, he, he, he called me Gil. I called him Rich. But he had respect for you, right? He yeah, had he respect did. For you. Yeah. yeah. He didn't treat you like a punk or didn't, didn't disrespect you. No, he liked me. Yeah. And th- authority. See, like, you know. And I never treated him a, bad. No. Never said respected, anything bad to him. He respected that. Even though he was a, he was a you know, a, just a, a murderer, serial killer, he had respect for you because everyone else had not respected him. You saw how they mm-hmm. treated him. And then you treated him with respect. You gravitated toward that. He came yeah. to say goodbye to you. Yeah. Okay. See ya. <laughs> Has your mom moved into the house yet? Yeah. She just went back today. Has she seen anything? Uh, Any more pictures? She There's uh, no pictures as of now. She came for a week, and then she talked to Momo about it, and Momo started talking about how Oh, you know, there's there's uh there's graves there's graves there. They're unmarked. Somebody whoever lived there took the took the markers off the graves. And my mom's like, okay, well, wh- where are they? And she's like, he's like, you got wells. And she's like, yeah, I got three. And he's like, there's one behind the house. Check huh. around there. I'm like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> my mom is a huge. Do that? My mom How spends do spends all day watching ghost hunters and all that stuff. So oh, she's geez. begging for it. And she was asking a question. She's like, I don't know. She's so open to seeing ghosts and feeling that but she never really has and so she wonders why that's never worked for her did you oh, talk she, to him about clearing it because he has a specific way she you doesn't do want to clear it she wants to have make no contact. she uh, she straight up would love if these ghosts came she wants and to make contact sat down and spoke with her momo get your ticket she wants she wants to make contact with them yeah. she wants to contact them that she be- wants any contact whatsoever she's always looking for mediums she's always doing that she's always trying even when she found a good medium that her her dad came but talked to the other sisters and not her all that kind of stuff. So she's like, I don't know if because she's so open to it and aware that like she wants it to happen, that that's why it's not happening. But do you think if I went back there and put a sheet over me, she'd think I was just a fat ghost? Um, that might be I'm dangerous because I don't know what she's trying to do with the ghosts. So it really, really depends. Uh, I want to show you guys, uh, you know, how my, my house. Is this fine? Is this the? This one of them. Uh, the orbs? No, the orbs are one <laughs> thing, but. This stuff, let me see where it's at. What I just got from the guy we're talking about. <laughs> we were just talking about that guy? Fucking from Momo. He's telling me, he's sending me a promo for Tommy's chili um, cheese fries. Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> let me see. What? I was supposed to see him Saturday night. I was just too goddamn tired. See, Momo? That's, see what I mean? That's no accident either. <laughs> Fucking. Tell him I said hi. That is no accident, by the way, that we were talking about him and he... He's texting. <sighs> I don't have these things set for it. I thought I'd... You know, sometimes they don't... I was supposed to go see him Saturday night. He had a show. But I just flew in from Seattle and I just got over this thing. If you watch the last podcast or hear about it, George is making fun of me because I was losing blood and coming out my coming out my ass. He made a song about it. Was this the ulcer? Huh? Was it ulcer? Yeah. Fisher. Yeah. You had an ulcer? Or like I, had a, I had an ulcer. Oh. I've had one bleeding ulcer. This one just opened up again, and then I had some palps that were bleeding on the inside, but everything Pops, come out yeah, negative. Yeah. Everything's good. I'm back together. But I told Momo, you know, they told me it was going to take two months because I'd lost so much blood, you know, try to build it back up. And I said, I just flew in from Seattle. I'm tired. Um, so I couldn't make it to a show Saturday Ryan night. says there's a paranormal app on TikTok. And see this? 
That's not my finger, nor is it, it's fuzzy, okay? What is it? It's a paranormal thing that was in my bedroom. So Mayan says, there's a paranormal app. This is not my finger, and watch how fast it takes off. Watch how fast it takes off. What? This is in my bedroom. It even makes a nah. sound. That's in front, it's right in front of me. It looks like your thumb moving out of the way of the camera. It's not yeah. my thumb. It's not my thumb. Well, what's the, the glare it's, in between it? That's, that's the, the, you, the TikTok paranormal locating it and then showing it, and then it kicks off to the left. So we did that on the show, and that was, that was a real thing. Um, that actually... Yes, and then wow. I'm thinking about putting a gate in part of my house, and I took a picture of the wall, and this image came out at the bottom. Which is, it was during the day. It was in front of me. It's not my finger. It's not my finger because it's round like the one that was in the room. So what do you think it is? I think it's something that's following, that's with me. I don't think. It's do you a, think it's somebody specific? Uh, yeah, is it? I, no, yeah. I don't know if it's specific, but I don't think it's, it's so a bad weird. thing. It's, it's not my finger. Fuzzy. And it's fuzzy. Yeah, no, that's a. Uh, uh. It's no face. It's not my nail. Oh, no. uh, it's not my nail. No, we all have somebody going around with us. You think? Uh, no. Um, I do. I, I now I, I'll tell you right now. I'll be honest with you. I love George. He's a friend. I love what I'm doing. But you ain't gonna see me around George's house late at night. You I know, know because I know. of all this stuff that you've been the last few shows we've talked about the paranormal stuff. Uh, I swear, a couple of you know, it just plays with your mind. I, I don't. I don't buy it, but just this week, all of a sudden, I'm laying there next to my wife. We're watching TV, and the door closes by itself. And my wife just went. She looked at me, and I looked back at her, and I and I just said, "Good night, Vera." That was my mother-in-law. She lived with us for six years before she passed away. And she was right. I said, "Good night, Vera," and, but I, I there was no explanation, and I started laughing. You know, you know about the house I grew up in. I mean, like, no, motherfucker. We, we, we didn't grow up together. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I told you the story. No. So we don't talk at work. You talk to you only talk to the fucking camera people. <laughs> so my the house I grew up in was. You built, think that's a, a part of like you want everybody to like you? I think I think that's part of it. It's got to be. Yeah. But I I, like I, do, I I do genuinely like talking to all the people. Like people. Yeah. Yeah. You're the same way. Right? Yeah, I, I do. I, I like talking to people. The, I know the prop girl, the, the pro, prop girl, prop uh, lady uh, has a son who's 10. <laughs> I can tell you. All right. She misses him. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I grew up in a house that was built in, in San Francisco in the Sunset District. It was built in 1907. It was built by a famous shipbuilder. He built that house for his daughter. He also was a famous architect. Um, if you go down to my house in any of the earthquakes, he built it. It's nothing. Did it survive the earthquake? Nothing moved. Picture oh, was wow. slightly crooked because he built this thing for his daughter, and it is built like a ship. Yeah. So it just beams everywhere. The guy, it, it doesn't oh, move. Oh, fucking nice. Victorian, two bedroom, one bath, and um, mm. he built all the Alameda courthouses, everything like that. He was dying. He uh, committed suicide, put a gun in his mouth in our living room. Wow. Um, and killed himself. We have a picture that I grew up with of him and his bio when you go into the upstairs in the hallway. Me and my little brothers were latchkey kids. We were, my, both my parents worked full time jobs and we took care of, I took care of my two little brothers the entire time. I heard shit non stop. It was him. Yeah, you guys had the picture there. He, yeah. probably felt, he probably felt safe there. Walking up the stairs. Yep. He still wanted to live there. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. He, well, he, go. he it, had right? some bad health. Yeah. Walking around. My brothers, we, my brother was three. We had little knives. We would go down and inspect the garage. and go like Little this. knives. Yeah. Totally. Steak knife. Walking around. But we heard shit constantly when I was in college. Lived in the house. And... Um, Fell asleep, I would feel 
something lay. I was telling Momo this. He said it was uh, he had a, a term for it, but I would feel something lay down on me almost every single night. Wow. And like snuggle. Wow. See, then I just don't sleep there anymore. Yeah. That's it. I just it. got so thank used you. to it. I was it just only thank you. It only takes thank once you. Thank for you. me. Yeah. And you guys weren't going to move. You weren't going to say, like, oh, no, this place is, you know, still on the house. We still have it because like, my brother lives there. No. No. Really happy. You know, there's something that says power suggestion uh, because I remember we, on the perimeter in Vietnam, you'd sit there and say, hey, get a new guy, FNGs. Hey, see that? See what? Hey, look at the bush. It's moving. And then lit, light it up. Just start. And all of a sudden, flares that start shooting up in the air. And there was nothing there because all you do is power suggestion. Before you know it, you got them convinced that it's really there. And it was easy to do. You, power suggestion do a lot of a lot of things. I ain't. And and if I can't con, if I can't control that, this Mexican's out of there. Fuck it, I ain't staying there. I can't fight it. No, know. no, of course. But I mean, you, we're not. I mean, this, it's interesting because you, your mom purposely found a. I mean, I mean, I, I haven't seen the place, but it's it's fascin. It would be fascinating to her, especially if somebody that was at home, but still, if you went somewhere, you would engage with everyone. But when you were home, now you now you have something that can captivate you. Yeah, I could never buy. I you know, it's like. Buying a piece of property that's right next to the cemetery, or they cut out a piece of lot, you know, the, this yeah. part of the cemetery. Now you get to live there, and I said, no, no, I, I don't know if the shit's real or not real, but I ain't gonna test it. If she I, had I the money to there. do it, she would buy an asylum or something like that that is very well known to be haunted. She would one hundred percent. She would immediately do it. Is that after the bank bank uh, bank robbery? Yeah, I feel like that's been over the past it's like trauma. five years. She wants to die. Yeah. I, maybe, dude. I don't oh, know. She wants to be excited. She's been she trying to get me. She's been trying for like three years. She's like, I need you to make she a pitch. I want to do dude. ghost grannies. I want to do a show, ghost grannies, so that they send me everywhere and I can go stay the night in, you know, castles and things like that and just hey. see what it's like. Uh -huh. You and I said his mom. Ghost grannies. Not me. You and his mom team up and you guys right? are the ghost, ghost grannies. grannies. They go and look. I'd be the one she, that's shitting on a camera. She wants to. Uh, if for what it's worth, you and her would be battling because she shits herself more than anybody oh, I've ever met. So Lord. that's great. That's disgusting. <laughs> it's absolutely disgusting, but we're an open book. You no, know, Momo here. keeps telling me, hey, let's go. I want you to go with me on one of these to go look. Go to the Queen Mary. And George is even saying, I was even concerned. I, I stood at the Queen Mary one time and I didn't like staying there. And after, you know, you read about it, you hear about yeah. it, and you hear shit at night, and the fuck. You, you, you know what? You should go to the Queen Mary because there's a little boy ghost at least churros at everybody's door. <laughs> <laughs> but in my in my house, so I live alone in that big ass, I mean, that, that house. Big ass, whatever, the house. And, there, and there's, even last night, there's things in there that, uh, as I was going to sleep, they you hear things, and just like, so what do you what do? You, gotta, you say goodnight, everybody? No, I can't. I don't talk to them. You don't ever acknowledge them? They, they told me not to because I would bring... That time that I was like that banging and shit, that was, I was talking. But... but Why don't you bring out congas and start playing them with them? I'll bring some fuck Carlos and Tano. So, so the, the, I was born in General Hospital down, you know, thing St. George Day, April 23rd. Like, my mom wanted to name me after somebody else, and then my grandmother said, what's the day today? And the nurse said, that's April 23rd, St. George Day. So same St. George. So I was in escrow in another house in in where in where I live, and then that fell through. And then I found this house, and in the fireplace it was kind of soot, and I had the guy the contractor clean it out, and it was a St. George tile from the twenties in my fireplace. Wow, that's a little serendipitous, wow. like, right? Meant to and be. you the, the you know, people don't realize that some things you see like that we're talking about more money text like some things are meant to be so it tells you that in the universe things are already predetermined yeah. and uh, things are just going to happen and you just have to go and do what you do if you say to somebody that says like you know you hear people that say oh i'm supposed to be on that flight i decided not to go take another flight and then you know those things happen all the time but i just think in our life that these things are all kind of predetermined i mean doing a show with mayan i never would have thought of it but then being there i'm not what would you say? I'm not um, surprised by it. Like, I'm not like, wow, this is really... I mean, it really is something. Do you just chalk that, it all up to fate, essentially? Yeah, I just yeah. think it's just... 
I never, we never talked about it. We never, she said like, oh, you know, when you grow up, you know, we'll, we'll do a show together. Never yeah. considered it. And although we go there and we do all the stuff that we've done already like 12 times, I don't think of it as unusual. Yeah. I just think of it as it's in the thing. And she did her work too. She's not like, you know, she was 12 and said, I want to be a comedian and then didn't work until she was 25, you know. She, she's done her work. When we first met, she was in Chicago, um, and you were telling me how mm -hmm. she was doing improv stuff. Second and, City. Yep. So she put in the... She, 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 but also, she I'm surprised that... Uh, I'm a little surprised at how much... Well, all the things that she struggles with. You know? I'm not... I, I don't... I'm just surprised by it. But also, you know, I think that... Uh, let me see if we're very careful here. I also think that... Her both both of us are very her, our parents are very different, so you know it's like you have a, you have a you have somebody that's afraid of water and then you have someone that's not afraid to, to, of water. It's like well, when you split time, it's you're, what gonna, is her, you're gonna inherit some traits of some. Of let's see what her else. boyfriend. What are the problems? Let's see her husband, her boyfriend, her husband. Oh, no, they're, they're not married. They're not married. married. Yeah, 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 they're not married. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean yeah. overall in the thing, like she doesn't. Oh, she, uh, you see a little bit of when she gets tired, but you know, of things that are new to somebody, right? She's or, a champ. Or wearing your emotions on your sleeve. Matt, can I get your car keys? Oh, yeah. Thanks, man. You know, uh, like she's that. a uh, she's a champ, and uh, it is uh, it's a it's a weird gig, man. Just but you did call it. I mean, we did a pilot three years ago, and he he called it, and he said uh, this was going to happen for sure. So there's that, like. Uh, yeah, it's uh, I it's interesting. Him, I said, hey man, you, I want you to play my best friend. Yeah, well, you know, I got this thing at Fox. <laughs> say, Fuck Fox, motherfucker. <laughs> and here we are. It's not unusual. Ah. It's not unusual. Yeah. Um, you know, I will say this: what you're talking with the bring it back to the anxiety thing and uh, the fact that I just talked to a therapist for the first time and I'm 51 years old. Like, I do encourage anybody listening. Who wants this? Because you did it before. You've I've done, done it for early. twenty-two. I've talked to a guy for twenty-two years. Oh, Same I, guy. I, I, I really, I, I, Vinny I did Boom it. Vinny, Vinny Boom Bots. Vinny Boom Um I, uh, I, I, I should have done it sooner. And I would encourage my son to do it. But my son has the same attitude already that Gil has. He's like, ah. Okay, yeah. Of course. I mean, everybody course, has that attitude. Because right? it hasn't been anything that's been familiarized to them. So, of course, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the idea of, well, I already know enough. Or, you know, I've got people, my mm -hmm. friends and stuff. It, what do we say? We, we started not... listing off all of his friends that uh, would do it, have done therapy. And he goes, he goes tells my wife, he goes, so, no, so far you're not making a great case. Yep. Are, he goes, those are all dorks. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I don't think I've had the time, Dorks. really, you know, because I was 17, went into the Army, ended up in Vietnam, come out of Vietnam, started college, then I became a cop right away. So it was always very structured now, and the wife was very independent. I mean, she ran the house. Three kids, she ran the house, she's never worked. And so now I never had time to think about this shit because I was always the man. Hey, you got a problem? Come to me. You know, let's do it. So I never had problems. Time, nor did I ever think. But you've seen some crazy shit. The amount of dead bodies you've seen. Yeah, but the dead bodies, uh, you know, I don't care if they're mangled or they're, they look ugly. They do this. To you and to most of the population, they're ugly. They're, but to me, they tell a story. It's scientific. You know, I, I don't see the blood, guts, and gore. You see blood, guts, and gore. If you were to see a, a man out in the middle of the street decapitated, and he's got $10,000 in his hand and his body's strewn about because a 10 ton my truck has just run him over. You're going to go up there and say, oh, God, look at the blood, the guts, his head. Hey. First thing I'll see is $10,000 in his hand. Mm. And that's why you did what you did. Yeah. Uh, so people who could do that. And, that and, would be and now, <laughs> you know, when I, when I see something, I'm looking at blood. Okay, blood spatterings here, blood spatterings there. Which was the first shot? Which, how did he die? You know, so I'm looking at other things. Just like a gynecologist when he sees as many vaginal cavities as he does on a daily basis, it's nothing to him. But let him get with his girlfriend at night, and all of a sudden he's breathing heavy. So that that's what it is. This is all just very scientific, kind of like a doctor looking at this stuff. It doesn't so that never you don't you're not haunted by that. You don't. Wait. No, not at all. No, not at all. That doesn't. And there's not one case or anything that you keep thinking about the dead body or anything. No, like that? not the dead body. More emotional stuff than anything else. A, a oh, lady, a spouse, uh, quadruple homicide where she watched her husband, her brother, and two nephews get murdered right in front of her. She got raped, not once but twice. 
uh, by the guy that kidnapped her. Uh, that's traumatizing. And then she had a she had to talk to me, a male that doesn't know anything about her, just met her, and now she's telling me this stuff, and she was traumatic. She'd break down hysterically crying. I found out she got raped. Okay, stop the press. Let's get her to the hospital. Let's get her examined. Now let's go over what we did and try to find out. And so that case today, that I was with her most of the night. I found her probably about 9 o'clock at night, and we brought her back to the station about 2 in the afternoon the next day. And I couldn't even talk to go explain to her family what was going on. I had my partner, who was a boot rookie, but she was a female. I said, and yeah, who spoke business? flute? No, she didn't. Had uh, You know I was asked. Yeah, I know you do. She did have nice everything asked. else. Yeah, it's fair. And, and she... Uh, she was fluent in Spanish because it was all Hispanics. Well, I, you, I couldn't even talk. It traumatized me that much. It, it, it was a, it was an ugly scene, but not because of what I saw. It was the human element. It was the human element that that bothered me more than anything else. But you know, I think part of that is I think it maybe might be different now. If someone was a victim of a violent crime, that their first contact isn't somebody who's not trained, yeah. like somebody who's a police officer yeah. that. Would say the wrong thing. He made the the, the first responding police I officer. I bet you wish you didn't get out of bed today. You know, like you fucking break the ice. <laughs> hey, that patrol cop that goes out there and sees this stuff. He may have nightmares. Collection. <laughs> you know, he may have nightmares. They may have ugly things, but not me. They do, but that, not me. It's, and I think it's different now. Like where, if a kid was abandoned, you know, a cop, would, a female cop would take the kid. That was their reaching out to. You know, make the kids sure, feel comfortable. Exactly. And now it's probably somebody who is a uh, um, a pervert. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so after seeing so much death and things like that, do you react differently to if somebody close to you passes away or anything like that? Does it? No. Does it not register the same, or is it like? No. It, it, like if someone's getting attacked, do you get a boner. <laughs> <laughs> only if I see only if I see a girl with big teeth on standing around. Last time we get this by a car, I'm about to come. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm not sure if we if we talked about anything that we had planned to talk about, but it was fun. I and think it was actually pretty great. We talked about anxiety a lot, and that's what our episode this week I, is about. Yeah, oh, I think anxiety is yeah. uh, hilarious. Yeah. yeah, that was a good one too. Yeah, well, this, this is a, oh, this, this is a great episode. episode. I'm just, yeah, I, I'm just happy. I'm flattered. I, I got to go to your. You not, were at the taping. Yeah, yeah, I was at the taping for your first show. Oh, were you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's and so I got, to, and now I'm sitting here with you guys. I'm, I'm well, flattered. Well, that, I'm that was what you when you knew. Oh, when you're talking about the moment where you get to walk out and you wave to the audience, and we did our curtain call, so you walk out at the yeah. end. And I'll never forget, there were two kids up at the top right, and they were losing their shit. And that's when I was like, oh, wow, this is special. Like, this is amazing. And um, I can't wait for everybody to see all of these episodes yep. because they're sophisticated, they're silly, they're fucking, they talk about real shit. Yep. And here's Here another go. thing. So, yeah. Tell a friend you're listening to this podcast. Obviously, you're a fan of George and Gil and all the people he has on. But this show is different. So it's, spread the it's word. Really, it's legitimate. It's, OMG, it's a good yeah. show. It really is. Everybody, uh, my family, they know I'm close to George, but family, friends. I talk about it because I, I push it. Hey, be sure. Yeah, watch it. Prime watch time, it. Channel 4, NBC. And they did. I talked to them. I've contacted people. Not one negative uh, thing Great. about it. Everybody likes it. So. Yeah. And that was the pilot. The yeah, pilot. all right. Better. Got Thank you, man. Let's go. Thank you. Uh, every Friday night at 8, next day streaming on Peacock. Love it. <laughs>